Welcome everybody, week three standard from division one now between myself and Will McCarty. This was recorded by me, so you've seen my hand here. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm playing in, mod in standard yet, so I am I saw this pretty cool list that I liked from Wyatt Darby at the SCG event, so it's Esper midrange, and as soon as he shocks me on turn two, I know he's on the Drake's deck, because I played it a fair bit in Arena. And there you go, three drakes. So my thinking here is to take the um, is to take one of the drakes because uh, he only has twelve. I've got a decent amount of removal, so keeping with two crackling drakes means that uh, he's got to tap out on turn four. But it also means that um, if I get a deputy of detention, I can get two drakes with it. I'm going to go for Dovin here, uh, because he can only play, and this is like a massive misplay on my part, because I knew about the shock, I minus Dovin, and um, Will couldn't fire that shock off fast enough. I'm going to go for Lyra Dawnbringer, because I don't believe he's got anything that can beat me game one, uh, unless he uses two spells to take it down. So you can see, when he starts to do this, I think he's uh, cycling pretty hard, he goes for the second Drake. But Lyra is just going to sit there like a massive big roadblock. Uh, so I've got a number of options here. I can bounce one of the drakes and get aggressive with uh, Discovery Dispersal using the Dispersal side. Uh, but I've got First Strike so he can't beat me there. And I'm pretty happy just to race him. I'll take down his last drake. A again I'm, I'm kind of on the mentality that I'm just going to run him out of resources. I think that's about three or four drakes that I've taken out now three drakes I believe so again he's digging I'm still pretty confident he can't beat me um, I can I can beat any of those crackling drakes with my first strike then he maximum velocity again cycling so he's up to a you can see his uh, 15 power coming through he's gonna put me down to 11 but I'm gonna take a chump there and this then I see this card thud I have never seen this thing before from M19 takes down my takes down my um, Lyra and suddenly we're top de we're in top deck battle now and he top decks another Drake I'm just sort of going through his graveyard seeing how many Drakes has he got uh, and th the problem with these Drakes that you can see is up to a nine power there you can they can pretty much kill you in a turn Seraph of the Scales this is a card that when I saw it and even when I saw it on coverage sometimes I thought this card is crap it's a mythic um, costs about ten dollars and it just dies to lightning strike I, I'd say bolt but we're not talking uh, modern it just dies to lightning strike so I think this is absolute garbage uh, he's got um, that gives him trample lava coil and there's a problem with it it's gone I concede we're going to game two I'm still pretty confident because I got an absolute ton of um, removal that I think he just will overrun him as I say in Seraph of the Scales, the, the thing that I underestimated that I really discovered in this match is its Death Touch. Uh, and it's it's huge, the ability to uh, use it as a blocker. Now when the Drake's deck is cycling things like that on their turn with doing nothing else, I know that they don't, they're looking for something, so I play out the Thief, I fully expect the Thief to die. But I'm kind of um, buying myself time here because I want him to tap out to use the Mortify. Um, again, this is card advantage here of Basilica Bellhorn. I don't really care in this matchup with the life gain, but um, make him discard a card. Uh, and I thought there's a pretty aggressive use of a Lava Coil, so it kind of m suggested to me he's a bit desperate and searching for something. Fires off a shock and response, that was a bit odd considering he'd seen Thief of Sanity and, and my deck has quite a lot of two powered creatures. This is perfect for me, the Crackling Drake comes down so I can use my Eldest Reborn next turn. I think Eldest Reborn off memory is just a one of out the sideboard. So I can potentially get back my, um, or I can't get my Thief, it's, it was exiled. <coughs> So he, he's kind of in this position where he just has to keep dropping drakes. You can see he's uh, five. Uh, the thing with this deck is it has to tap out for the drake. So finally I find a Hero of Precinct 1. It's kind of what this card is built around. I thought I thought a lot about this card in terms of 
I mean, sorry, this deck in terms of what it does and why why play this, why not play Grixis, for example. Obviously, it's Mortifier and stuff, but Hero pre Signal 1 seems to be the key card in this deck. It's what synergizes everything else together. So you can see I've got the Thief in the Graveyard. He still keeps tapping out. I know he's got the Dive Downs and the Spell Pierce. Uh, Hostage Taker, I'm kind of super greedy. I don't want to um, cast it until I can get something with it. So now I'm thinking, what can I get? I go for Thief because I think it's going to probably die, but I kind of need my Seraph of the Scales to survive. I swing the Seraph in because I can make it a two-turn clock. I swing the one just in case he was tempted to uh, trade, but uh, I wanted to use the Death Touch anyway, so he was going to die. The, one, the little 1-1 one, one doesn't do anything. I've got Lethal on board here for the two four fours, but he's got a blocker. So now I'm starting to think two lands in a row would not be bad because I can take that Drake with my Hostage Taker. The other, the other line I'm considering at this stage is to Seraph of the Scales, uh, to swing them both and then play the third one. You can see that he used Banefire to take down my my um, Thief. So again, I'm going to... I'm just going to cast it there just to use it as a blocker to force him to give up the Drake. And he, he kind of saw the line there, so he conceded. We're going to game three. Keep a Thief of Sanity. Again, my, my thinking here is that he plays at four shocks, probably four lava coils, and possibly a couple of um, lightning strikes that I, I don't expect him to draw all that removal. And I've got, I think my deck plays about 20 plus creatures, so I can kind of run him out of uh, removal. You can see he has to keep answer, answer, answer. A couple of options there. Um, Th Thought Eraser is going to set up a nice turn four. You can see he's got three lands. So I, j I just keep the Mortify because he's on three lands. I took the Drake. He's got nothing going on, so he's going to have to tap out. I, I know if he draws anything, it's going to be a... Um, like a Spell Pierce or something, then he's probably going to play off the top. Uh, I, I took Basilica Bellhorn there ahead of Seraph, because if he does top any removal, I think he's under a bit of pressure. He's probably going to use it on the Bellhaunt. But now I'm just getting super aggressive. He's still looking for something. I'm getting into that territory now where I just need one or two more lands and I can use Hostage Taker to steal things. Such as a, an Enigma Drake. Now I've got, the, yeah, I was going to say, I've got, I've got the line where I can actually Hero and Mortify. Not really sure. I, I went, actually, I went for this prior to attacks so that, um... Actually, I'm not sure. Uh, so that I could try and clear the way and push through seven, but it didn't work. I'm just going to pass the turn here because uh, I can just steal something of Hostage Taker next turn. Him swinging here was brilliant because it, um, I, I'm thinking he must have dived down because you wouldn't open yourself up to removal like that, but apparently he didn't, so I take the match uh, two games to one.